War is afoot. The House of the Dragon trailer is out, and boy, has this been a roller coaster ride. I started off not really caring either way, largely because I'd seen Game of Thrones Season 8. But then the trailer came out, and I was like, actually, this has some good parts. This could be interesting. And then I saw what the showrunners were saying about it, and we went over the cliff, through the floor, and into the gates of hell. Men would sooner put the realm to the torch than see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. And this may be controversial. The trailer had some good bits. They clearly knew what the audience wanted. We started off with an incredibly masculine feel to it. We had dragons, battles, and war. And Matt Smith, I have to say, although I was never too keen on him when he was Doctor Who, he seems to have mastered this part perfectly. Look, I've seen Shad rant about his armor and how it's unrealistic, but to me, it just looks cool. And his mannerisms, oh, I don't know what it is about him walking down this scene when he's confronted point blank by a sword, but there's just something about it which I absolutely love. Whether it's him or the editing, I don't know, but I think it's done perfectly. Knives will come out. The problems come later in the trailer. The red flags are everywhere, and it's not just from this trailer. It's something that we saw previously. A woman would not inherit the Iron Throne. Because that is the order of things. When I'm queen, I will create a new order. But if this is all we had, the trailer's all we had to go on and be like, okay, we should give this a chance. Because despite the facts, there's warning signs everywhere, they could actually pull this off. But the issue is, that's not all we've got. The showrunners have been given interviews, and I have never seen a more condensed, red flag laden article as what you're about to see in this video. And this is why I expect this video to ruffle a few feathers, because if you've just seen the trailers, then that may seem like I'm reading more into the piece. But if you dig deeper, if you go into the interviews themselves, then it all becomes more obvious. And you find out that the showrunners are just peddling the same twisted script that everyone else in Hollywood is peddling in today's day and age. Because you see, House of the Dragon is a powerful, dark Shakespearean tragedy, and that sounds good to me. I would love that. That is what the show absolutely should be. Then you find out that the showrunners explain how the new series tackles issues of race and certain violence. And this isn't going to be the good kind of violence where someone hits someone with a sword and you find their guts hanging out. No, this is the violence of oppression. Yes, despite the fact that most of the world isn't actually America, we're going to make an international TV show based solely on its internal modern day politics. Hey, it sounds like a great way of making money to me. You see, this is a more intimate story than Thrones is. One of the clearest differences between the two is that House of Dragons feels more like a family drama. They're definitely trying to make this more specific, more targeted in its demographic. And who exactly is that designed to appeal to? I like the echo of how empires can quickly fall. Those are the type of conversations we are having in our own country, which I don't think is anything we would have thought about talking about 20 years ago. Yes, the HBO Max content chief is obsessed with talking about his own country, which he just assumes that everyone else is in, despite the fact that this goes out to an international audience around the world. Because believe me, if you're American and you're fed up of having real world politics injected into your TV series, imagine how it's like for the rest of the world. Gone are the days where entertainment is meant to be about escape. Escapism. Now, everybody just wants it to be a discussion about the real world. And it's not a discussion from a neutral point of view. Oh no, this is most definitely a partisan show. Because you see, despite the article saying that Game of Thrones actually had some of the best female characters in pop culture, each being strong, unique, and unlike one another, um, yeah, that's not good enough anymore. Now, we've got to go further. Because the show was criticized for its handling of such characters, proving once again that no matter how much you pander to the literal lunatics on the internet, you never go far enough. So while some people would say that you shouldn't try to appease them at all, other people, such as House of Dragon are, um, deciding to appease them even further. Because apparently their portrayal in Martin's world was extremely, uh, problematic. This was a fantasy realm, but it's directly inspired by medieval Europe. And as we know, inspiration means actually nothing. Inspiration means you looked at something and then decided to do something else, but it doesn't mean it's realistic in any way, shape, or form. But the Dragon Team is much aware of such criticisms and aim to tackle its material a bit differently, because that's what I would expect when you have a majorly successful show, right until you ruined it. What you should obviously do is handle things a bit differently, because obviously if you've got a successful show, the first thing you should do is do everything else exactly the opposite, and believe me, House of the Dragon are. 
shows are a portrayal of their time, and there's a lot more awareness now about what we're portraying and why, and who's having the conversations about it. That's an interesting part, isn't it? Who is having the conversation? I mean, normal, non-lunatics would say that, actually, who's having the conversation doesn't matter. It's the topic of the conversation, the points that matter. But there's a strange idea in modern times that actually the topic, the point, the objective doesn't matter anymore. Now it's all about the identity of the person that's saying it, which is most important. A point which apparently Blois agrees with. When shaping the first season, the showrunners realized a theme was coming into focus one which they hadn't expected. The patriarchy would rather destroy itself than see a woman on the throne. Honestly, I don't know how no one saw that coming. That has been the repeated points time and time again through every single piece of media for at this point, a decade. Oh no, a man's in charge and that means that everything's gone horribly wrong. Men would sooner put the realm to the torch than see a woman ascend the Iron Throne. Quite frankly, I'm not only fed up with the topic, largely because it's just been done so often it's boring at this point, but it's also factually and logically inaccurate. Because if you want to take the idea that men have been in charge throughout all of history, which would be extremely short-sighted and naive of you if you did, you'd have to realise now times are different, and then you have to ask where did those powers come from? Well, they would have obviously come from the men. So the simple fact is that no, they'd actually be quite happy to give women power, because as we've proven throughout our history, we have. And again, if you wanted to say this was a fantasy world, I'd be fine with that. But I'm not the one which is saying this is directly inspired my medieval Europe. None of that bothered the Game of Thrones showrunners though, when they were just obsessed with the patriarchy. This wasn't something where we said we must make the show about this, but rather, this is something where we realise that's what we'd found in front of us. These are people which are so ideologically driven, even without intending to, they still made it where the men are just the oppressors of the females, who are actually the intelligent people of the group, and would just be great leaders, if only those pesky people with testosterone would get out of the way. Because as Cook puts it, there are times where Emma is on one stage and I'm on the other, both surrounded by male characters being idiotic. And we know that if all of these men just effed off, then it was just the two of us, the round would be fine. It's the meddling and the peacocking and the egos that completely just muddle everything. A woman would not inherit the Iron Throne. Because that is the order of things. When I'm queen, I will create a new order. Now, despite the fact that that opinion seems to be straight out of a 2019 gender studies class, maybe there's something we can question about that. People who are so naive, arrogant, or just self-obsessed that they think all of history was arranged a certain way purely by accident. Every civilization, through every point in time, throughout the entire world, all did things the same way simply because apparently men are bad. They didn't do it because there was some kind of evolutionary advantage or social benefit to this system, no. They all did it because of uh, peacocking an ego. Everyone throughout all of history didn't do things a certain way because it was better. They did it because they were just being idiotic. But none of this should be relevant, no matter how much a fantasy world might be inspired by medieval Europe, we shouldn't actually be required to know anything about it or refer to it. But the thing is, I'm having to because they're doing it. It's their points which I'm responding to, and it just keeps on going. In the show, there's a focus on childbirth and its inherent dangers, a story thread that feels timely in the weight of the Supreme Court overturning a decision. The childbed is our battlefield, how one dragon character puts it, and indeed the first season does for giving birth what Game of Thrones did for weddings. The Red Wedding in the Game of Thrones is obviously one of the pivotal moments of the series. Masses amounts of death. And that is apparently what they're doing for childbirth. In medieval times, giving birth was violence, says the showrunner. It's as dangerous as it gets. You have a 50-50 chance of making it. A statistic which is physically impossible to actually be true considering you'd have to give birth twice just to continue the species and replace your own parents. Evolution would not allow that percent chance to ever be true. It's actually a very natural thing to happen and was never quite that dangerous as you're trying to make out, but it doesn't matter for the show. We have a number of births in the show and basically decided to give them different themes and explore them from a different perspective, the same way I did for a bunch of battles on thrones. I'm sure those different perspectives won't actually be ideologically driven in the least. Something which is especially weighty 
when they're talking about the violence which has been perpetrated on women by men in that time. I don't know if you're quite getting it yet, but the scales seem to be weighted very one-sided during this entire debacle, almost as if one group is actually perfect and the other group is all evil and just oppressing them and it's the only way they can maintain power. But it is interesting how that is the narrative they decide to push when also seem to be going directly against their very main theme themselves in their own article. Because the toughest role to fill was Princess Rhaenyra, filled by Darcy, who uses they them pronouns. Rhaenyra, or honestly, I've no idea how to pronounce it, has an ongoing battle with what it means to be a woman and is a fundamental insider. She's terrified of getting locked into motherhood and is aware of her position and how it would be different if she was a male. I'm someone who's not made up of zeros and ones, and I've always found myself pulled and repelled by masculine and feminine identities, and I think that plays out truthfully here. She can't attend court in the same way that would come easily to other people. Simultaneously in this story, we've got the narrative about how one side is evil and one side is good, and yet we still have cast members who aren't either. It seems to me that the narrative is just that, and one that the crew actually don't even believe themselves. But of course, the grey area seems to just fly out the window the moment it becomes convenient for you, because you just want to go and crap on half the population. And I'd have to admit, I haven't read the books. This could all be in the story, and it could all be fair enough. If it's a genuine adaptation of the books, then okay, fair enough, I guess. If it's a genuine adaptation of the words on the text, then I have no problem in criticizing the authors of the books as well. If there is any author that could be criticized, it is George R. R. Martin someone who can't even be bothered to finish his own book series. Although that may have something to do with the fact that Martin signed a massive five-year deal worth in the mid-eight figures for things like this show. What's better than finishing your own book series than getting paid mid-eight figures for somebody else to do all the work and just make stuff for you? Let's face it, if I was paid mid-eight figures to get the same deal, then somebody else would be sitting in this chair making this video. I'd be on a beach somewhere sunning myself, probably ranting about the same things as I am now. Meanwhile, the second controversy surrounding the original series was that the show actually stuck to what was in the books. Oh, what an abomination that actually we didn't alter a text for modern American sensibilities. But the dragon faced an even bigger challenge to stay authentic to its source material. You know, what you should always do given an adaptation. Because let's face it, the Targaryens are the creamiest family in fiction. So what you should do should be obvious. You should just stick to what is in the books. But don't worry, because the showrunners knew from the outset that they wanted to change the conversation about it. Even before they started, they understood that they wanted to destroy this universe. The world has changed a lot between 2011 and 2021. It's been 10 years! That's a lifetime! Don't you know what's happened in that time? All the nutters have just taken control of the asylum, and that just means we need to entirely restructure our entire society, ways of thinking, and just ways of acting in the world. But don't worry, we're not just going to assume that that is our tiny, little enclosed world in Hollywood, and actually everyone else in the world is... I don't know, normal? No, we're going to say that that's actually what the audience expects. The conversations that they had was, how do we create a cast for House of Dragon, but still do it in a way that feels organic to the world, and doesn't feel like we're pandering or tokenism, despite the fact that those two things are exactly what we intend to do. I can understand why they may struggle with that question. How do we try and trick people into making them believe that we're not actually doing the exact thing we're intending to? Because unlike everybody else in the world, the people in Hollywood still do judge people by the chemical composition of their skin. I don't know, but I thought we were past that, but apparently the showrunners of Game of Thrones aren't. But don't worry, because if you think that all the lunatics in Hollywood are actually obsessed with the chemical composition of someone's skin, something which which the rest of the world actually moved past decades ago, then um, not quite done with it yet. Because whenever we struggle to actually come up with logic and reason for an opinion, we always go back to exactly the same old stories. When it comes down to it, the people that actually support these ideologies just aren't particularly very smart. So they don't have many different places they can go. And that's why we get the fact that actually uh, the fans are all toxic. That's, that's true. Yes, he was in for an ugly shock when his casting was announced because you see some fans actually reacted to wanting the original law to being the original law by just saying that actually you're breaking the original law. And he didn't realize that it was a big deal until he actually got negative comments on social media. No, instead, he points to Martin's world as a fantasy and says it still has to reflect a world, which I believe is what people are asking for. They want it to reflect a world, 
They want it to reflect the world of Game of Thrones. But of course, they're not going to get that. What they get is the reflection of the world of Hollywood, one which seems to be driven by people who are obsessed with what people look like and people's physical characteristics. Something which, as I've said, the rest of the world moved past ever so long ago. It is strange to me how the people that create entertainment seem to have all of these really bigoted hang-ups and then blame everyone else for them. We've seen it throughout your entertainment for literally years at this point. But everybody else, we'd kind of just like you to stick to the source material. Please and thank you. And the thing is, all of that drags down the show. Because actually, I thought overall the trailer was pretty good. It had a lot of great things in it. A lot of great actors. A lot of talent. And yet, the showrunners just can't keep their mouths shut. Because they're so proud of showing the world what they're actually like. And so when you get comments like, George actually loved the pilot so much, he got text messages with more explanation points than I have ever seen in one place from one man. The, the show is powerful, visceral, dark, and like a Shakespearean tragedy. And that everybody is flawed, human, that does good things and bad things. Driven by a lust for power, jealousy, and old wounds. Just like human beings. Just like I wrote them. That is the advertising I want for the show. The advertising I want from the show is that of the trailer. There was a lot in that trailer to like, and there were some things that made me like, okay, okay, I need to calm down, I need to watch the show before I can decide whether it's going to be good or not. If they just put out the trailer, I would have had an entirely different opinion on the entire thing. Because when you make something where your intention isn't to entertain, it's to educate or preach to, you tend to think that actually, you're better than your audience. You're the one who has the right beliefs, the right principles, and you need to spread those into the world. And that is where these articles come from. That is where the showrunners actually just don't have enough sense to keep quiet. Because to them, no matter how repulsive or disgusting what they're saying actually is, they're actually proud of it. They see no benefit or reason to keep quiet about this stuff, because they think that everybody else in the world agrees with them, despite the fact that this entire thing is just a twisted bubble in Hollywood. They live in a world where every single person around them agrees with them, or is simply too scared to announce any other opinion. And then they release this, and they release the interviews, and they're met with actual normal people from around the world, who all immediately vomit in a corner, and they're very confused. And so I can understand why their instant reaction to this is just confusion and pain. But the simple fact is this is a lesson for everyone in Hollywood. Basically, you need to shut up. The reason why people liked movie stars in the 90s isn't just because in the 90s a lot more people were a lot more sane, but also because those people couldn't share their twisted opinions with the world. Nobody needed to know that you were this extreme. Nobody needed to know that the showrunners actually despised most of the population in this way. But they're so engrossed in their own echo chamber that somebody having a contradictory opinion doesn't even cross their minds. And if it did, you know what the response would be? Yeah, we don't want their money anyway. And so that is my roller coaster ride. I went from not caring about this show at all to watching the trailer and actually being like, this could really be a good series. Right until I found out exactly what people thought, exactly what the message behind the show was. That actually the realm would be fine if the men, the peacocking, and the egos would just F off. What it is is exactly the same partisan dross which has been repeated time and time again throughout entertainment for years. This isn't new, this isn't original, we've seen it all before, and we know where it leads. Because the only people that will write a story like this are the same people of no talent, which has destroyed every single adaptation they've ever touched. So congratulations, San Diego Comic-Con, this is the wonder of marketing. You made me go from not caring about the property at all to being quite looking forward to it, to realizing exactly what this show was going to be, and despising and dreading every second of it. I wasn't planning on reviewing this series before, but now, after this, honestly, I don't see how I have any other choice. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.